On October 7, 2019, I took part in a bridge blockade in Toronto, Ontario as a part of Global Rebellion with the groups Extinction Rebellion and Animal Rebellion. When activists do things such as block intersections and bridges, people get angry and say, you're disrupting society. That's the whole point of doing these actions, to disrupt society, to disrupt the system. I wish that just asking people nicely to go vegan, ride a bicycle, use public transportation, stop flying, and stop buying stuff you don't need were enough. But humans spend about half their lives on autopilots, and when activists do outreach on the streets, sometimes people ignore us. So to wake people up, doing disruptions is sometimes necessary because no one is ignoring us when we do that. Instead of ignoring us, they're reading our signs and realizing, wow, climate change must be a very serious matter indeed if these people are willing to stand right in front of our cars and put their lives on the line. So at the bridge blockade in Toronto, I saw activists sitting on the road and getting arrested. And I thought to myself, I should do that too. I sat on the road and an officer said to me, if you sit there, you're getting arrested. I said, okay. I got handcuffed. Then an officer said, are you going to walk like an adult or do we have to carry you? I said, I'd prefer to be carried. I got carried by the police and it was filmed by the media and I ended up being on television wearing my vegan hoodie and ends capitalism hat. <laughs> After I got carried to the paddy wagon, an officer said I was getting charged with mischief under $5,000. They took my eyeglasses and I got into the back of a paddy wagon with some other activists. We went to the police station and an officer said to me, is this your first time getting arrested? I said, yes. He said, what made you decide to get arrested today? I've received quite a bit of training about not talking with police, so I said, I'm exercising my right to remain silent. I got inside the police station and my shoelaces and belts were taken from me. Everything was blurry and I asked if I could have my eyeglasses back. An officer said, will you get a headache without your glasses? And I said, maybe. So they gave me my eyeglasses back. I sat in the cell and there was no mattress, no blankets, no pillow, just a metal bench. I looked on Google Images and found this picture. This is the type of bench I had with square holes in it. There was also a little metal toilet with an attached sink. I sat in there for a while and then I was brought to a room with a phone so I could talk with a lawyer. The lawyer just said, don't talk with the police. And I said, I am indeed following that advice. After our conversation ended, I went to exit the telephone room and I discovered the door was locked behind me. I remembered, oh yeah, my freedom has been taken away from me. So the officer saw I was done with my phone call and she brought me back to my cell. As for food, when an officer offered me a cheese sandwich, I said, no thanks, I'm vegan. She said, it's vegan. We know you're all vegan in here. We have to have food on hands for people with dietary restrictions. It's soy cheese. I decided to trust that it was indeed a vegan soy cheese sandwich. And so I took the sandwich and I ate it. And then a short while later, the officer brought me another one. While sitting in my cell, I had nothing to read. So I just sat around and thought. I remembered reading a book about prisons, and there was one story about a guy who said that when he was put in solitary confinement, as part of his punishment, they kept the lights on bright all night to torture him. I waited to see if they'd dim the lights in my cell, and they never did. It was bright all night long. I thought, wow, this is how people get treated in here? They just get thrown right into being tortured. I also read about a guy in solitary who said that instead of eating his sandwich, he used it as a pillow. Fortunately, I had my shoes with me, and I used them as a pillow. I tried to sleep, but I couldn't with the lights so bright. I ended up being awake all night. I was cold, so I did squats and sit-ups to warm myself up. When I talk about jail not being fun, some of you may say, it's not supposed to be fun. Jails are about punishing people. Well, guess what? Punishment has no place in our society at all. Sometimes people may need to be kept away from their fellow beings for periods of time for everyone's safety, but no one needs to be punished ever. 
Instead of punishing each other, let's make a world where everyone has all their needs met and let's help each other to heal. While behind bars, I counted the square holes in the bench. There were 95. I quietly sang to myself and quietly played drums on myself. And I thought about the people I've read about who spent decades in prison. I just shared a story on Facebook today about someone who spent 36 years in jail in Alabama for stealing $50. I found being in a holding cell lonely and boring, but I'm grateful I spent a night behind bars because the experience made me even more of a prison abolitionist. The prison abolition movement is a loose network of groups and activists that seek to reduce or eliminate prisons and the prison system and to replace them with systems of rehabilitation that do not place a focus on punishment and government institutionalization. Strong communities make police obsolete. Strong communities make prisons obsolete. Strong communities make capitalism obsolete. So if you want to see a world where everyone is happy, safe, and free, Build community. In the holding cell, I lost track of time, and finally an officer walked by, and I heard someone down the hall ask her what time it is. She said 6. I looked at her with a confused expression, and she said 6 a.m. Because the lighting never changed, I had no idea if it was 6 p.m. or 6 a.m. Later, an officer walked by with some forms, and he said, if you agree to two conditions, you will be let out. The conditions were to not congregate on the bridge where we did the blockade and to not talk with any of the 19 people I got arrested with until the court date on November 18th. After being up all night, I just wanted out of the cell, so I signed the forms. I got released at 8.30 a.m. on October 8th after about 19 hours behind bars. I got my stuff back, and then in the waiting room, I saw my friend Tati waiting for me with vegan pizza. She looked very tired, and she said she waited for me all night. Ah, uh, that touched my heart. Thank you for being there for me, Tati. Several days later, I went to an appointment at a jail to get fingerprinted and get my mug shots taken. The condition said to not talk with any of the 19 people I got arrested with, but they didn't say anything about not being in the same place. So I continued to attend protests where some of my fellow arrestees were present. I just didn't talk with them. I felt that it was mean having the police tell me that I couldn't talk with my friends. Then one day while attending a protest at Canada Goose, an officer said he saw me talking with one of the activists I was not allowed to talk with, but I assured him that I did not. The tomatoes I'm holding in this clip were a gift from my friend Layla. Yeah, I didn't talk with her at all. I didn't say you're talking to her. Yeah, no. With her husband. You were there talking to her. The condition is. You have the paper with you? No, no. But the condition indicated you're not supposed to have any communication with her. And uh, communication with her. Something like that. You're here too in the car. Do you breach in your condition? You're aware of that? Okay, you said don't talk with her, and I didn't talk with her. Communication. communication means basically it doesn't have to mean talk. Any communication at all, whether it's in writing, verbally, oh, yeah, yeah. gesturing, no, yeah. all, these are, all these are all these are coming. No, 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 physically, no gesturing, no communication. No, he wasn't there. Like and you were there talking with her, that's not. Would you not? No, no, no. No, I know. I'm really following it strictly because I don't want to get in trouble. I just the first time I got arrested. I don't want anything. I don't want to risk me there. I want to do something else right now without the gun trying. I don't want to be here doing this. But I'm saying. Yeah. Based on what I've just learned, you're both are in conditions and you're doing something. Okay, I say, I'm saying, I know the conditions and I'm following them very strictly. Because so I want to get over it and not get in trouble. Only communication, no, no distance, nothing. Yeah, there's no distance. Yeah, I said nothing but distance. You were just talking to a husband. Yeah, only, only her husband. Alright, right, we make a note of that and I'm going to check my video again and if I see likewise. Uh, you will be arrested. Okay, okay. if I yeah, see I my okay? Yeah, yeah. Right. Thank, you. Thank you for your for your Sure, all right. Yeah, there's no there's no there's no physical there's no distance. Okay. Thank you, have a good day. Thank so you, make sir. sure everybody's safe. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. Sure, yeah, yeah. Right. thanks officers. I have nothing but love for all police officers. I know police are just stuck in this system along with everyone else. I am hopeful that one day soon we will end capitalism and make a world where there are no police or prisons. 
Sometimes officers lie to try and get someone to confess. So maybe this officer was lying as part of his job, or maybe he was just mistaken. But either way, I knew I hadn't spoken with the activist I wasn't allowed to speak with. So I just told the officer the truth, that I hadn't spoken with her, and she let me go. I hope you weren't upset that I included a clip of you here in this video. I want to help end the system of capitalism and help stop climate change so that you and all your loved ones can have a chance to grow old together in a sustainable world where all beings are happy, safe, and free. A few days before the court date, a lawyer helps me and some other activists get our conditions dropped. Then on November 18th, all of us had our day in court. Many people came to the courthouse to show their support. The media interviewed the activists. The women handled the interviews brilliantly, so I just stayed in the back and refrained from getting interviewed. Part of being a feminist is being in the background and making space for women. In the courtroom, I wore a collared shirt I painted with the words, Smash the Patriarchy. When the big moment finally arrived, the Crown said they were withdrawing the charges because it's not in the public interest to seek a prosecution. So the charges got dropped. Having 20 activists get arrested helped us get quite a bit of media attention to spread awareness about the need for a system change to fight climate change. So I am glad I got arrested. And I thought I'd make this video to talk about my experiences. Was blocking a bridge the best use of my time? I don't know. That's a question I'm ready to ask myself. Are you ready to ask yourself some questions? Is eating flesh and secretions from animals the best use of your time when there are plant foods available? Feel free to share your thoughts in the comments. I look forward to reading. Yesterday was the 50th anniversary of Fred Hampton getting assassinated. So I would like to end this video with a quote by Chairman Hampton, who was very vocal about ending capitalism. We got to face some facts that the masses are poor, that the masses belong to what you call the lower class. And when I talk about the masses, I'm talking about the white masses. I'm talking about the black masses and the brown masses and the yellow masses too. We've got to face the fact that some people say you fight fire best with fire, but we say you put fire out best with water. We say you don't fight racism with racism, we're going to fight racism with solidarity. We say you don't fight capitalism with no black capitalism. You fight capitalism with socialism. Thank you, Fred Hampton. The choice is ours. Socialism or extinction? Let's make the right choice. Let's pick socialism. Thank you.